Right? All right, go ahead and call the meeting to order. If we can call the roll, please. Jennifer Harden. Here. Jack Miley. Here. Bill Grassy. Here. Tom Heck. Here. Steve Jeffries. Here. All right, y'all stand for the pledge, please. Sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On behalf of the board, I would like to welcome all students, staff, parents, and interested community members to tonight's Board of Education meeting. All right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I would like to remind everyone this is the meeting of the Board of Education held in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is time for public comment during the meeting in the public participation section on the agenda. First up is a motion to approve the minutes from the June 27, 2009 board meeting and the July 8, 2000. July 8, 2019 special meeting. If I could have a second, please. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hack. Is there any discussion? Okay. If not, call roll, please. Tom Hack. Aye. Steve Jeffries. Aye. Jennifer Hart. Aye. Jack Miley. Aye. Glenn DeGrasse. Aye. Motion third. So we have special reports. Um, I would actually like to start special reports tonight. Um, I have something. Please have Mr. Kalis and Mrs. Malafgar come up with me tonight. <laughs> All right, so as everyone hopefully in the room knows, um, quite recently Mr. Kalis and Mrs. Malafgar went forward and both received their doctorates recently. So we want to take a minute tonight just to acknowledge how really amazing this accomplishment is for both of them. Um, we invite the families here tonight because I know that <laughs> <laughs> we invited them to come tonight too because we want them to be a part of what you guys achieved as well. You know, we really know that this year has been challenging. We've, you guys have taken on totally different roles than you ever probably will again. Maybe not both of them over time, right? With high school, but in your careers of being interior decorators now and doing all these things that weren't normally part of your job. On top of that, now Dr. Malakar also was a principal for us twice this year in two different buildings. While still being the director of curriculum, Dr. Kalis headed to his job of running a school district while again finishing up his doctorate. Also while being parents to three kids, each of them, and trying to still get all those things done. So I just think it is a huge accomplishment that we wanted to make sure that we honor you both and let you know how important it is. I got us a cake. In the back. Um, so I have we have these made for both of you. So on behalf of the Riverside Local School District and the Riverside Local Board of Education, we do want to recognize you, Dr. Melissa Malakar, for completing your doctor of education. And on behalf of the Riverside Local School District and the Riverside Local Board of Education, we do want to present you Dr. James Kalis for completing this. If you could, would like to have Dr. Malakar's family stand with her for a picture. Oh, and say, oh it really has to happen. Because otherwise, these people don't ever. my mom is back it's there, too, right? Oh, oh mommy has to come up there as well. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, my mom and dad. Nick will take your camera. Nick will take your camera, and he will take a picture with this. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Everybody looking at one, two, three. <laughs> oh no, it's a Samsung and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh my god, it's not an iPhone. She really knows how to drive you though. Hold on a minute. All right, there you okay, go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's oh, this is like real zoomed in. <laughs> <laughs> there. That's blurry. It's not good. Oh, Nick, come on. <laughs> you can just send her off your phone, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be easier. Okay. Good. All right. Thank oh you. my gosh, I think I got the beaver in the picture. Oh, good! <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Congrats. Nice. I'm missing one. Yeah, you're missing one. That's yeah, kind of a bummer. This is Maddie. Yeah. Oh, good. good. An iPhone. Maybe this is <laughs> your daughter. Three, two, three. 
Thank you. Did anybody else from the board have anything they wanted to add tonight too? Any more pictures? Any I'm just, I'm just <laughs> really proud of you guys. It was a ton of work. It's just a ton of work. I'm so happy for you guys. Congrats to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Jim. Yay. Thank you. Oh, we get kicked now. Oh, awesome. Honey, <laughs> 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 You do, you just do. It's cake time. Cake is cake is awesome. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kalis, if you wanna go ahead with the rest of the special reports, please. Okay. We have our monthly update from uh, Mr. Easily, uh, we're getting close as uh, the board's going to see in, a, in my uh, presentation. I did get some uh, aerial um, footage of both buildings and the neighborhoods around uh, to show exactly how far we are with the with the building. Um, Mr. Easily, it's just rock and roll. It's both sides, which I just we it's everything is happening. Finishes flooring, site work just almost just this close to being done with the site work at uh, Concord. You know, a little bit of concrete floor, and we're talking about getting the paving done. All the uh, light poles are installed, we're energized, and we can light it up if you want to. We're going to hold off on that for right now. <laughs> Madison, it's, site work's a little different there, but that's going in earnest now. The back's getting done by next weekend or after this weekend that'll all be done, stoned up. Playground equipment is at Concord. It's installation starting tomorrow. We'll be at Madison next week. Furnishing start to arrive Monday. Yay. Oh my gosh. We'll get it in there. Uh, it just, doors are going on, hardware's going on. We, we, they have the fiber in the buildings now. And they saw like whatever that means, so it works. <laughs> so we're, we're just we're just moving on to full speed ahead. It's hard to believe they're going to be done in like a couple weeks. It's crazy. Yeah, Look how tired he is. I know yeah. it's crazy. So how's the demolition going? It's crazy. The demolition we had a little bit of a setback on that. I was talking about that earlier on the '94 edition. You know we didn't have any drawings for that, so we didn't know what was under the ground. We found out the footings and foundations are about seven feet, hmm. and they're very large. And I think it's the same kind of soil conditions we ran into when we were doing the treatment plan. If you remember, hmm. with so they poured these massive things. Out. So if you drive back there, you'll see these 20 foot long, huge pieces of concrete. So we got them out. And they're gonna start hauling out uh, probably tomorrow. Right? Yeah, hopefully about 10 trucks running by the end of the weekend. The rest of the building will be down and we'll be hauling out. Our goal right now is to get, now that we got those foundations out of 94 edition, that's our last part of fill on the site. So we'll get that brought up while they're taking a rest now, that way we can do all that site work instead of waiting for the rest of it to come down. So we started out front there digging for a new approach to the parking and that today. Isn't there a pallets of bricks outside of Madison at this point? There are several pallets I got together. I don't know if they're outside yet, outside the fence line. But, um, I thought they, I would buy. Uh, they're, they're made, I, I, they're, they're, they're made, I, I know we were talking about today, and they had a pounce. I just didn't know if they got them outside the fence. But uh, if they're not out there today, they'll be out there tomorrow. Yes. I, I'm not sure if I missed it, but when is the rest of Madison coming down? And by the end of the weekend, the rest that's standing should be down. But we'll be hauling out uh, before that. Right now, it's just kind of tough because the site's so congested. Mm -hmm. So. It's tough to bring the whole building down if you can't get to it with everything brought down. And then the issue, we ran into a lot more concrete than we thought. Did they manage to get the big sign out of, or the big stone out of Madison? Yes, Madison? and that's in the That was on the weekend, right? Yeah, we have a little bit of chip in one corner, which that was that was good coming down. Like <laughs> that, so, But um, I don't know where it's at, but I know yeah. the district has it now. Mr. Weiner's got it at the 
concord maintenance building right now all secure i think it's three nice. pieces yep we have everything taken over by the maintenance guys and we uh, locked it up and uh, all secure cool so can't be in a scavenger hunt pardon but maybe scavenger hunt you just need to you know bring some uh, well we were afraid to chain. put it underneath anything outside we didn't want it damaged and so it's under lock so, so looking at the <clears throat> the actual transition you, at the last meeting we, we had a billions of grounds uh, you still talked about more or less mid mid august mid to that next week that's yeah. you know, where we're shooting gotcha and what <clears throat> so obviously there's still be work to be done mm -hmm. so what what does it what is the threshold of us being able to move in and, the, and, and what what work do you foresee still need to be done when, when that happens punch list items <clears throat> um, items that would affect you from moving in, maybe some cosmetic things, uh, nothing functional. And the, the driveways and everything else? Oh, yeah, that, that'll be. <clears throat> parking lots yes. and everything yes. else. And lined in now, at, at Concord, she'll be fully paved. At Madison, you'll just have that drive going in the back. Right. Go to the, the, because all your parking's out front. Yeah. yeah. And we'll get that as, as quickly as possible. Chris, I really want to be prepared. <clears throat> my intent that in the next like week or two is to send out an email to our staff, Riverside, Riverside uh, net, um, telling them to meet me at 608 or you know, Parkside or Riverview at a certain time uh, if they want to go on a tour. Now you're going to be putting it's parking right. lots in, right? For in the next couple of weeks. And then let's say if I wanted to do it this Thursday. That'd be fine. It just, it, I just need to know the time you're coming because we're really busy. Just I just, so well, I would <clears throat> say it, it starts at 10 o'clock, but I'm not sure how many people are going to show up. You know, we can only take so many people in yeah, the right. time, right? If I can tell you, we can limit that. We've been trying to do about 10. That, yeah, that's so manageable. when I set it up, that's what I did. They had to sign up. Here's another option. Could, I know you'll be done. That's what I'm going to say. You'll be done the 29th which is the teacher, you know, it's not an a, a exact, you know, like I don't have anything planned for that day. I'm wondering, could we set up rolling things? I know you're technically gone, but could somebody come, could you be on site? I don't we'll, know we'll that would be, be on site doing things. Oh, you will? Maybe we yet. could do it yeah. and I could schedule it that day and then they could come and go as their day but permits. Realistically, I'm wondering how many people are really going to show up on a Thursday say at 10, but if, Say, okay, say 30 <clears throat> people do. I can take eight in, have them come out, take another eight, you know, or you can come with me or Chuck or somebody. We can take groups in at a time. I mean, we could do that. And, and you, you're, you're, you guys are very familiar with the building. I don't have any issue with you taking the direction now. I just am not sure about the, the parking. Yeah, no, just, just give me a heads up. You, you're okay. I'll just let you know because what we're going to do probably. Thursday, we, we port our approach lab up on the north end, and we have to wait seven days for that to cure. And then we'll be parking up there, and they'll be working down on the south end, bringing the stone through there. So it just just maybe give me a call, say Chris, north or south, and we'll tell you. Park. Well, the north end of 608 of Parkside, I need to start using that the name of the building, Parkside. The stone's down already, right? Yes. We have our approach lab there, so you can't drive over it, so that's shut off. We poured that Friday and a half down seven days uh -huh. for it to reach a strength before we could drive on. There's a machine that's actually parked. Yep, and we got some problems around. Right. So that's where we'll be parking as of probably Friday, because that will be working now okay. on the south end. And then pouring that, we have to work it in how we're going to pour that. Because once you pour that approach lab, it shuts us off from leaving going in there. We'll be leaving it up. We'll take care of it on yeah. our own. And Submit out. Parking will be tight because we'll all be jammed up on the north lot, which is I, that's why. Just let me know, and I'll make sure that. We oh, those have parking across the street from the north yeah. north entrance. Jim, let me know when you guys have people scheduled. I'd like to go okay. and see one of them. It doesn't matter. I know my kids want to go see something before they go to school. You know, like the other thing too, the okay. board needs to understand. You, I'm I'm happy Hi. to take you guys. You don't need me. You could stop in and go anytime you want. Yeah. You can, if you have some people that you want to take through, just check in and they, they'll give you the hard hats. And yeah, I do. I, I, and if you don't have it, I'll make sure Mr. Kalis has Steve and Lee's number, and you have mine. 
and we don't have trailers anymore. Those are all pulled out. Oh, so okay. All they're gone now. Yeah. If you could just give us a call and the guys will know you're coming and either I'll meet you out there or, or they can meet you out there. Okay. You With the free. film you're going to see today, I mean, it's really cleaned up outside on uh, at least Parkside. In Madison, you'll see that in the next several days, too, yeah. especially around the back and up the side there. <coughs> I had a parent ask me, and I didn't know the answer to this, are we going to have some kind of like open tours? Because you know, there's kids that are worried about how are they going to find their classrooms. Like, all, what, what is our plan for that piece of it? We, we, weren't, we weren't really sure what time we were going to get occupancy, so we didn't want to commit to a date. Right. Um, so we didn't have anything necessarily planned other than the commissioning parties that we had earlier for the old buildings. Um, I don't know if we've gotten any further than uh, what we've discussed. Um, Nick, have we? Yeah, I mean, ideally, about a month ago, we were trying to throw around some dates, but like we said, I mean, we don't really know exactly what date we can get in there. And depending on how close we're going to be cutting it, it's kind of hard to commit to something. So we we're thinking that hopefully at some point in August, we can get something maybe that final week of summer and kind of throw something together pretty quickly, at least for the kids who are coming in. And then once school starts, maybe do something once after the building has been open for a week or two and everything's 100%, then maybe we can do a bigger community. Right, I was asking more like right for the kids yeah. that are, and even at Buckeye and Melridge as well. I mean, these are all kids that are, a lot of them going to new buildings and just having an opportunity to Walk so the maybe buildings it's and even like when the going. teachers are in the buildings getting situated yeah. during the daytime, you know, opening it up that you know Thursday and Friday before school. Right. But you know, we got to make sure cash out the details before we. I just want to make sure we're doing something like that. Do you think we'd be safe in the early? Part that of is the not for a very common thing, just in my experience uh, with the teachers. Yes, because. But bringing the kids in, just to forewarn you, that's going to be a very busy time for you, even if you have the uh, taking an entire week with just yourselves moving in and that. That's, it, it's going to be, not, I'm not trying to discourage you, I'm just trying to tell you it's going to be a lot going on there. He's trying to discourage you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I the Wednesdays the Friday just the teachers are there is a good idea because they need they need to be able to the concentrate. Teacher, and they usually the teachers are in there that they're, they're familiar with, and it, it's still a learning curve for everybody. But and the kids will get it real quick. But as long as the teachers are in there and know everything, it's, it's just not come. There, there's so much going on. It's just you're moving in there. Yeah. Okay. Just just a. My they opinion. won't have that set up till like yeah. the day school starts. Is right. like so my opinion. You probably just need to have like a community day you know, after school starts. Yeah, if, that's, mm -hmm. if that's what you're alluding to. No, I, I, I had a parent specifically asking just yeah. as a kid, their kids yeah. were worried about. We've gotten yeah. half a dozen questions from parents or students who will be going to the school saying, you know, where you know where are we supposed to go and how right. they're going to know where to go. Um, it's more of an know. orientation issue, I think, with the Correct. parents than it is yeah. looking at the new school. Right. Yes, I was talking about more than. I mean, the open houses, houses are already scheduled, but the open houses are. The open houses are Wednesday and Thursday after school starts. Right. So. And they're going to be family oriented. So, what about? Uh, should I ask you too, Chris? Mm -hmm. What about having a, a block of time on a Saturday? That's it's your building. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. If so I they could have something. I'll, I'll make sure. No, I'm just saying that they could have like a block of time to walk through the building, two hours, whatever, and come and go as you please. It's, um, it's just if, if you don't have like again, my experience typically with an open house or grand opening, you have that fully staffed. All your teachers are there and everything else. I would just warn you against if you don't have that kind of personnel there to allow the public to just meander through the building. And not that anybody's going to do anything, but they, they don't know the building and they're just wandering aimlessly through there. And it's well, the, just my experience. Yeah. From what I've seen. And another option would be that the PTOs could have a could be there to help tour guide or something, them. yeah. 
So and then that would be yes if you if you took people in groups, but not not just allow them. Like right. You would in an open house or they can walk. Right. Because teachers are in their classrooms. And, right. And there's people everywhere to, to explain things, show them things. And there's going to be lots of needed bells and whistles in the buildings too. Anything else? I think we, we have just one other brief report as well. If Mr. Easley, you finish it. Yeah, so there's, and there's no issue with, with I, I know it, you're getting towards the end, but any issues with suppliers or any contractors? or, um, or No, workforce? it's just it's a busy time of year and you never have as much labor as you want. <laughs> but we're working uh, our typical five day work week right now is four tens and an eight plus an eight and an eight. Mm -hmm. I have some tired people. My electricians are taking the weekend off actually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because I've worked them to the phone and they're in place where they can. So now where I'm lacking, maybe not enough manpower wise or maybe not for it. I have one couple more loads of casework coming. One coming today's Thursday. And I think I have one more coming the following week. Area A2 at uh, Matt. So. Your, um, your experience in the, doing this, obviously, in all these years of getting the occupancy st stuff, is that an issue? We, we have sat down, and I, I probably told you the last meeting, we, we had all the uh, inspectors come in, the county fire. Uh, we, we, the health department didn't come in as far as the kitchen app, but we spoke at length with them. We we probably had 30 people sitting around the table between all of us and them. And probably sat for two hours to go through everything, the processes of, of the county and, and what they want to see in that. And, and so we're in good shape. We have the fire departments that are heavily involved, uh, making sure that you know they, they don't want to hold anything up. Tell Mr. Jeffries earlier that the, the uh, DAS system, which is your uh, repeater system for the radios for emergency personnel, that since that was a change order that came later, we <coughs> may not be completed by the time. But we both said we will give you temporary. Temporary. Okay. okay. That has to be completed in order to get the the full uh, yeah. permit. Yeah, temporary occupancy allows you to do like you would normally do, and then once we complete that, then they give you. Okay. Yeah, and I we went through that experience at the church, so we know what that's like. <laughs> so that but, that's what I anticipate. Even if there's something else I had to do, it's uh, at a minimum a temporary. But that's the only thing I see right okay. now with the temporary office. Perfect. Did the entrances come? They are coming Thursday. We had a three-day delay in that with the shipping, so they are starting both sites on Thursday, and by then the next week they should be done. <laughs> okay. I won't have the glass in them right away. That'll lag about a week or look so behind, but I'll have uh, probably look inside that. All the other things. What are we doing with staff who start early? You know, like your secretarial staff and your principals, where are they going? <laughs> like, meanwhile. Do you know what I mean? Before, yeah. before they can actually be in their building, like, just oh, anywhere, yeah. like, you yeah. know. One of our goals, too, is what we kind of run into sometimes is we're going to, and I was talking to my guys about this today, that very thing, because typically the administration is in there right. earlier, so the big push to get everything done in the admin areas. And I, I don't know how the county is here, but a lot of times they'll allow you to start moving your stuff and to get situated as long as you're not functioning as you would. Like a <laughs> so technically, you're not using the building for its intended right. purposes and all gotcha. that. How do we find that out? We'll we'll talk. To You'll talk. You to just county. you just go and I know. I'm just going to see if you're on the laptop and tell her to sit in the office. Like, what do they do? Power it. Yeah, for forgiveness. Later. <laughs> right. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> but it's I, I've run into that a lot, and some will not. But it, it's our goal to get that. Okay. You'll have those so, conversations though, and let us yes, know. Okay. Yes, we will. We will talk with them. Thanks. And just I want make to yeah, stress I mean, them. It's just so you can start moving things in. You're not occupying the building. Right. Okay. You're not making phone calls from the building. You're not. Yeah. Okay. 
Are you keeping the same uh, phone number at Madison Avenue? I believe so. They're working on, IT's working on all that transition. I think uh, Madison's supposed to take, the you know, brewery's supposed to take Madison's number, and I think uh, Parkside's going to take Leroy's number. Mm -hmm. Because of the Hill Road lease that's on the agenda tonight, they want to keep, we need to keep the phone service over there, so we're going to keep the same number that was in there. They ought to change the Hill Road number, otherwise they're going to get calls. Mm -hmm. I'm better clear from my phone now. <laughs> right. Any other questions? And so the, the last question is, so we obviously have not put the real use on the uh, water treatment systems. Is there is there a separate certification for that? Has that already been achieved from the, the that's, EPA? Or? That's all... Um, that's all with Laura doing that. I know the health department is involved in it. It's almost just, I'm gonna say it's the wrong way, but it's just like they're they are just a presence there. They're really not, I don't understand. Okay. They're not issuing anything. I think they, they're, they're bound to just, they show up once in a while. But Laura's handled that with the EPA. And actually the one at Madison is functioning. It hasn't gone through its official startup. Concord will be done probably a couple of days in the next week, and I know the manufacturer's coming out for the official so, startup. So what, what, what affluent is going through Madison at this point? Is it just six being run and toilets being flushed on testing, or what, what's? No, it's going right now. Everything goes in. There's a fairly large manhole that everything goes into right by the treatment plant, and it goes from there. So the amount of water we're generating. Uh, we're not flushing the toilets, all the water's turned on, man. It's, so it's, it's very minimal. And then it goes into the holding tanks there, so we can't generate enough water to actually for those to start sure. going. Okay. So what Merritt has done is they've charged those tanks just to allow it to circulate, because it will do that once they get to a level, just with the floats there. So it, it's... Hmm? I can see it's very exciting stuff. Um, a month from now, basically, we'll we'll be in possession of two new schools, and and school will start right around the corner from a month from now. Yeah. So, very exciting stuff. So it feels so. like it's next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is. But uh, thanks for all your your efforts, and I know you're, we're not done yet. We we'll thank you again. But uh, really appreciate everything and and being up front and telling us where things stand and what's what's going well, what's not, and uh, it, it really helped us understand, you know, have confidence in going forward by understanding where things really were at as, as we were in the construction phase, so that's, that's greatly appreciated. I want to echo uh, what uh, Mr. Hack said. This, this is our first rodeo going through a major project like this, and I have to tell you that uh, you're very responsive, you have the best interest of the district in mind, and um, I really thought that you stepped us through this program uh, in a way that uh, didn't make us feel all that anxious. And I, I do appreciate it. And I, I know there's sometimes where I'd call in a kind of a panic or, or why did you always have an answer for me? If you didn't, you'd find it for us. So I, I do appreciate it. Thank you. I agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's been a good yeah, yeah, working with <laughs> Chris was yeah, awesome. And, it's been nice. <laughs> and you know Jim Kale still doesn't say that about everybody. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Tomorrow. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'll send you a baby picture. <laughs> I'm figuring uh, Nick it doesn't know how to use the camera, so it's probably not so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just staring at the flat screen. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Thanks. We also have Emily uh, Emily Danis here from TDA. She's going to give us a, a brief uh, report as well. Yes. So just a brief update on Phase Two, the six through twelve building. We continue to have our core team meetings finalizing, working towards the finalization of the master plan. So we've been hard at work reviewing lots of options, costs, trying to refine and narrow down some of the options there. Uh, we just at our last meeting reviewed some preliminary site, site fit tests so to start to look at the, the site. Um, we're actually meeting tomorrow morning to continue that. Targeting a consensus master plan finalization by the end of August. Um, and then to ultimately present a recommendation to the board very shortly. Okay. So that's just a brief update um, on our phase two, six to 12. Excellent, thank you. Right, and I wanted to thank TDA because they have been very instrumental in this process that we did not have 
the last go around and at least from my perspective I appreciate that just so that the board is is comfortable and understanding that they have done they've done everything that we've asked them to they've come back they've revised they they've been just been really great to work with thank you okay it takes us next to old business if anybody has anything all right then that takes us to new business <coughs> um, for new business, did we want to get those work sessions scheduled that we had spoken about? We can. Yeah. Let's, so we want to have I say definitively, let's do. Let's do. All right. We remind me what work session we're doing for August. I, I cannot feel like we remember. I know we needed one in August. I just. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <don't need> <laughs> I know we said August and then October, correct? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna start with heads and dates. All right, so in the past we've done our work sessions two weeks prior to a board meeting, keeping them on Tuesdays, if that's what works best for everybody. August is the 27th. So if we wanted to stick with what we've done in the past, which is two weeks prior, that would be Tuesday, August 13th, if that date is agreeable to everyone for a work session. August what? 13th. Two Wait, weeks prior. Any, any chance you might put that on the 14th? That would be fine with that. Oh, you know what? I'm out of town. So <laughs> scratch that, please. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm out of town the, the 12th. Um, then we get the 12th. The entire week. The entire week. Okay. And, and so um, we could potentially look at the, the, the 21st. I cannot. I have a football game that day. Anyways, August we had um, established the work sessions for the Alibi and building placement discussion. Um, so that's like facility stuff. September was strategic planning. Okay. Um, so could we do How about like the sixth? Well, that's next week already. Next Tuesday. We're down here. Which I mean start getting in the college it, kids go over. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I just don't know if we, do we have what we need to do a work session next week, Wanda? We will. We probably will not. We have, like I would think that tomorrow's meeting that we're going to have with the core facility team, we're going to come up with additional data, but then you know TDA is going to have to come back and provide more information and whatever. And they're tar we're targeting the end of August. So okay. So do we want to push off our first work session then to September? Yes. Okay. Like I would say early September for that. What about September 10th, which would be our September board meeting is the 24th. What would September 10th look like for everybody? The first one. Yeah. Any, any chance we want to move that for the first two weeks? You can have it without me, but I'm just saying. I'll be at Russia on the 9th. Russia? Seeing uh, Putin. So. All right. So I saw that on CNN that's announced. That's that's very impressive. Yeah, I got so lunch okay. scheduled. Yeah. Um, Trump so set me up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it'll be important for for everyone to be in attendance at the one that we talk about the LFIs and the placements of the facility and you know the things that we have talked about simply because um, if the board wants to be comfortable with with mm. going forward so with the facility, I think everybody needs to hear what will be presented by TDA and the committee. Okay, so that will push us into the week of the 16th. Right, but Jack says he doesn't, really isn't like back in town really until he's like, landing on the 16th. Like we, we have to go to, the, the deal is we have to go to the um, um, OFCC in September, correct? I think so. Right, they, they're presenting that in September so that we can go. I can do the um, I can't put into words what it is because they're looking for Gary. You'll have to help me out. But, it, but to get on their agenda, we have to go and yeah, for October. We have to we have to be passing some <coughs> stuff in September. And so I think the earlier we can have these conversations, the better. Maybe we move it to, to the last week of August and ask them to you know expedite that as a process. Um, I realize that the second is Labor Day. I don't know, and, and the third is the first day of school. So we 
really certainly don't want to be doing it then. Um, we're going to be moving. There was a lot going on. Um, but yet we still have, we have still have timelines that we need to meet for facility things to continue to move forward with the uh, 2020 primary elections moved from May to March. It has moved up our timelines just a little bit when we were thinking, you know, we want to be able to possibly go to ballot either in May or November of next year and have that ready for potentially to do May if we want to be ready for then. It's moved up to March, so it kind of has moved our moved our game plan up just slightly. So that everybody just needs to be aware of that. Right. We still we still have lots of time to plan this. It's just that again we have to go to the OFCC for what is it that we're the L package the L okay so right so we have to actually apply for that as a program and that has to go in October. Okay. I mean we're already we're already in the program but we have to get on their okay. agenda. So what about August 29th then? Uh, I can't. I'm a point. We are doing great. Yeah. <laughs> right, we have a board meeting on the 27th. We do. We just meet early on the 27th and started 5:30, doing all they have kind of work session ahead of time, and then have the board meeting after. Marathon? We may have to. As long as we don't have an executive session after. <laughs> Could everyone be here at 5:30 on the 27th? Why don't you even go with five? That's fine. As long as everyone can do that. Steve, does that fit you? That would. I mean, that gives you guys almost five weeks to pull more data together if there's anything that we need to do in the meantime. Five o'clock mm -hmm. fits you guys too. And then for the next one, it was going to be October, right, Blonda? Uh, we had September was on the schedule for um, the strategic plan. October was on the schedule for um, considering different types of compensation schedules. Yeah, starting those conversations, and then we put November um, for employee recognition programs. Um, additional things I think we had on the agenda for September, starting to get, get us some statistics about graduating classes. You know, there's there's different time frames in here for different things. November to have frameworks for curriculum committee that builds and provides supports for students, and then January. Um, January. Okay, so do we want to have a work session in September? I think the goal was we wanted to have one every month and concentrate on different things. Okay, so September, Jack has gone the first two weeks plus a little bit. What about, do we talk about Thursday the 19th? We can't do that Monday. If we try to get something Thursday the 19th of September works for me. What about everybody else? Me, that's good. Belinda? That's fine. Steve? Um, I can try to make it work. Yes. So we've got September 19th. We have August what? Right before the, work, the board the meeting. The board oh, meeting. 27th. Okay, Five. and then the 19th would be at? We usually do work sessions at 6, don't we? Okay. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Not sure. Yeah, can I bring that on? Yeah, I said I'll get it. So what time? 6? Six? 6. Uh, October... Our board meeting is the 22nd. <coughs> if you want to stick with the Tuesday, we're going to do it two weeks mm. prior on October 8th. Anyone have an issue with October 8th? No? All right. 6 p.m. work session October 8th. What was the September one? September 19th. Thank you. Six. Is there anything on the school? calendar that day? Um, I'm just checking one thing. I think it's on the 9th. Um, Hope Ridge uh, Church has asked us to do a presentation, and I mm -hmm. think that's the day we're doing uh, the 9th, not the 8th. Mm -hmm. Let me look it up real quickly. The 9th is a Wednesday. Yeah, the 9th. Yeah, so we're good. You said we have one for November, Belinda? <coughs> yes. Okay. The 10th. The two weeks prior to the, our board meeting is November 19th, so two weeks prior to be November 5th. If anyone's got an issue with that day? Oh, is that, is that OSB? Is anyone going No, that's it's election day. Oh. <laughs> that whole week is not good. Okay. And, I, and then the next week's 11th and 12th, I think. Is that, is that OSB? Veterans Day is 11th. That's my birthday. 
so you would have to do it the 14th. We can do that if you got it on the 14th. I'm just saying, if you want it yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do the 14th. November 14th works for me. Everybody okay with that date? Yep. 6 p.m. And then, Blondie, you said we did have one for December? Uh, we did not have anything in December. No. Okay, then let's leave that be. Yeah. No. The Please. Holidays. Okay. That's what I had for New Year's. talk about the New is, Year. Is there an agenda for each of those meetings, or how are we going to know if, if our particular department needs to bring information? Just out of curiosity. We'll you, tell I Cheryl. Didn't know anything. She can pass it on. No, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know anything about the work sessions, and so some of the things that you mentioned were things that I... Would we'll expect sure that all. you'll want me to, yeah. to bring some stuff. So, Jim, can you get that to Melissa because you have all that? Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't see else There's okay. just a number of dates in here, so I guess one of those. Okay. Is there anything else for our new business then? Okay, that takes us to Board of Education Committee and Liaison Reports. First one is Superintendent's Business Advisory. We don't have anything going on through the summer. I imagine we'll be starting up again once school starts. Curriculum and programming. Curriculum and boosters. Um, no meetings lately. Um, we'll have to see what next month brings. Well, we have one we have scheduled one. for August 8th at 9 o'clock. Okay. Nine? Right? At 9 o'clock, yes, I have. <laughs> to remind the both of you. <laughs> I'm looking on my calendar, right? Yep. Now. Yeah, we texted and that seemed to work fine. Yeah, so. I remember doing this show. Any producers? Nope. All right. Finance audit personnel, so what's your plan? Nothing. Easy. Mm -hmm. Buildings and grounds alumni. So as far as alumni goes, I did miss the last meeting, but I was able to help set up the booth at Painesville party in the park so they continue to collect money with the Harvey Alumni Association and um, so they got off to a good start I don't know what the ultimate uh, you know where they stand from a fundraising perspective but but they're up and running and it looked like it was a like I say a good start Billions of grounds we, we did have a meeting we, we heard the more recent update from, from Chris I guess the thing we're all focused on is I think the week of the 19th is when we hope to take possession of the buildings and, uh, and then we also had an update at the Billions of Grounds from Mr. Weiner on all of the, the summer activities that have gone on. You may have noticed the parking lot has been sealed and, and the lines put down, so things are looking great there. Uh, but rather than trying to put words in your mouth, Mr. Weiner, since you're here, why don't you, if you could just give us a, a brief update on, on some of the other projects that have been completed. Absolutely. Uh, parking lot seal coated and striped, uh, that's completed. Um, schools right now 90 to 95 percent completed as far as cleanliness goes to the buildings. Um, 42 windows uh, painted over at Riverside along by the band area as you come into the campus. Um, mulching has started today with the uh, summer crew um, hauling mulch around all the different areas which is which is going along real well. Um, those are completed. I'm complete. Right now we're waiting um, for sidewalk repairs at Lamouth. Water damage done last year uh, with a water pipe bursting, so we're going to replace part of that sidewalk. Uh, I'm going to be looking to do some uh, parking lot repairs at Lamouth um, as far as um, a little bit more um, major repair work to be done. Drop ceilings are being put in right now. Um, in the guidance center at Riverside, half of the office area was done. Guidance was not, so we're going to get drop ceilings and new lighting in there. Um, around Melridge, trailers, we have skirting that's rotted off, so we are going to replace the skirting uh, over at Melridge probably, hopefully, next week. Had some water damage done last Saturday. Uh, I got a call on Saturday. We had uh, all that hard rain came down. Leroy um, had water running through the building, but um, I got pictures. If Leroy were a ship, she'd be afloat. She, but she's still standing strong. <laughs> so we got all the water out of the building. We had minimal amount of damage done to boxes. Uh, biggest concern to me was the football stadium. We had water that went, we had cleaned the drains a couple weeks ago. 
but the water came down so fast that it went from uh, under the bleachers, the stadium, built back up, uh, brought up um, sand from the stadium underneath the field, and um, changed the coloring of our uh, outline of white, dingy. Um, I cried, um, but everything worked out. I got a hold of field turf. They're going to come out. Um, they're going to be able to work in the evening, so we don't have to shut down practices of any sort. They're going to bring in some machines that have um, jet sprays underneath. They're going to do um, the cleaning of the turf, do some repairs, um, where some seams split. Um, no major damage. They've had this issue before. The track, um, we hosed off with the summer kids to get all the dirt down the drains, re clean the drains, and long story short, they're going to come in and clean that track the same time they do the stadium and also do some repairs on the track that we noticed. Um, I don't have a price on that yet, but I gave them the go ahead. I said, whatever it takes to get this done. So I, I would just uh, comment that that was unusually harsh rain, it was torrential. And, uh, and I live down in a valley on a, on a creek and, and it was almost like a flash flood. I mean, there were trees uprooted uh, with the, the whole, this is too much information, but the whole root ball was taken with them. Usually it's, it's, they're on the edge, flood comps and they go, but this the whole root balls went with huge trees. So it, it was torrential, it really was. It came intense. down so fast, we just couldn't handle it with the drains even with that system being great um, on that field. Um, but we're going to get through it. We're going to be ready for opening night. Yeah. Good. Exciting stuff. No. Anything else for us, Mr. That is it. Thank you. All right. Policy and legislative? I have nothing. All right. It takes us to the superintendent's report, Ms. Dr. Kalis. Oh, thank you. Gary, can you have it? There's, uh, there's actually four videos. The first one is uh, Parkside. It's about a four-minute video of the <coughs> exterior of the building. Wanted to thank um, uh, SRO and Falvey. He's not only a deputy, but he's also the guy in charge of um, the drone at the uh, sheriff's department. He won't be our SRO next year. He was promoted, so we will be getting another SRO, just so the board knows. It looks great. I mean, it looks fantastic. Even a few days ago, the parking lot in the back on the north side wasn't even uh, that far along. That's the entrance, first entrance drop off, but the big loop. This is what uh, Chris Easley was talking about right here. And they poured that needs a cure for seven days. It's really been cleaned up uh, compared to what it has looked like. Will they have landscaping in before school starts? I'm hoping, I'm hoping they will. I don't know how much. I know there's uh, some additional landscaping that we have to put up because of our settlement agreement with the, the township. Cool. It does. It looks, it looks great. Yeah, it looks nice. It's going to be interesting. He's going to pan over um, eventually to the SDS fields too, which is a whole different perspective, obviously, being up in the air. But we were able to manage to um, save a few trees over in that area because I remember some of the concern with residents was that we were going to just rip everything down and uh, that wasn't necessarily the case. We did take down some trees, but not to the extent that we thought we needed to. When did he shoot this? Was yesterday. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they did, I was there two days ago, and none of that was like that. He, no. Yeah, it's amazing work. So I, 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 I snuck in today, yeah. and uh, and the, the trailer is now gone. The, yeah. the trailer is, yeah. has been taken out. So where do you have to go get a hard hat then? They're inside. Uh, yeah. When you go inside the doors to your to your the right, straight there. Yes. But There's a big box. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's pretty good. I guess he flies these things into the homes when there's. The constitution situation. Wow. He's right here, actually. Yeah. Now that's the STS field. 
I wheeled a lot of that property way in the back. Oh. Um, we still need to fence that off because we can't have anyone with ATVs or, or you know, dirt bikes back there. Oh. But we were able to preserve some of the uh, trees. Yeah. So then the other part of the land is to the right of that? Is ours? Actually, a little bit further west behind this area. Um, and the north parking lot pretty much takes us to the uh, um, boundary. Well, well, that, what I'm asking is, remember they said they had to keep us the same equal amount of land for if there was ever failure? Is that to the back no, of that? No, that's to the west. That's Ms. Arden, west. where's the walkway at the... the uh, I'll, I'll the show you in just a moment. It's right, uh, right in here. That's where the proposal is, right? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you know right there? Right there? there. No. there. No. No, no, that's that's it. No, that's right, if you stop here, this is where it would start, right in here. Oh, come around that house. Yeah, that's the so. cul de sac here, and it would go behind what about five houses or so, and it would tie into a little asphalt path, which is on the other side of a field. And then on the other side of that is the drop off loop. Yeah, it's like Google Maps, you just want to yeah. control it with your mouse. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to get one of those things. Mm -hmm. It's like an IMAX. Right. It is nice that we could keep some trees. This yeah. is a longer people, right? video, and then after this, there's a couple of shorter ones. So. Mm. Awesome. It, it would kick out right in here. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right in there. Right in there. This is going to be the field here. He almost flew over Jen's house. <laughs> what was that? I thought it was that. <laughs> so I thought Jen, when you say field, what kind of field? So just like just an open green field. Like that ball field. Yeah. Like 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 yeah, we can stop it there. Yeah, you can stop it there. Yeah, so right in here. Right. The other thing, um, I think it'll be in the, it's in the next video. By policy, by board policy, we, we don't transport students that are within a half a mile of uh, the drop-off to their front door. And uh, we did a rough measurement. It's not exact yet because we can't get into the parking lot. But a rough estimate um, uh, shows us that everyone, if you go down Summer Woods, you know where that ravine is, where in between houses there's some green space, that's about where the half a mile uh, point is, which again, um, just it, it it just gives us a um, an ur I don't say an urgency, but the very strong need for that that pathway, because where that pathway will be located will service those kids in that neighborhood area, and we'll we'll see it in the next video. What's the next video? Is the next one okay? They're going to keep that plowed in the in the winter. Yes, yeah. it's our responsibility to maintain that pathway. It's ours. It would be our responsibility. They're putting it in, but we're going to maintain it. It's their property. What do we have to plow that? We have a truck. See this right here? Pickup truck plow. Right in here. If it's wide enough. This is about a half a mile from uh, where the drop off would he be. He has a boat on So all these kids in here uh, would not have uh, transportation, but all these kids can also have they can be this, out there with a snow this pathway. We need that pathway. When is their timeline to put that in? Uh, they, 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 right now, the HOA sent notice to um, the township, and it's my understanding that now they want the HOA to talk to the few residents that don't want the path there. Oh, I did it's hear. also I great did hear about that. when you have a, a larger event, too, and it's a nice day, instead of trying to park in the parking lot, just walk. Right, you have a lot of or they'll probably be parking on that street. Extra. The residents who are in that position are on summer are they on the on the are they on the cul de sac or are they on the main street? On summer. Are they on the main street or the cul de sac? They're on the main street. This is just uh facing the the we're going, going east now, uh, approaching the property. This is not a very long video, it's just uh, okay, another view. And then the next video will be of Madison Avenue. It's almost like a game. Right? 
the last one is Madison. Madison still has a lot of equipment. Madison still standing. Last so I drove by the end. I was there last weekend, and the front part of the building was still there. And then la and Sunday yeah, night, God, no. drove by there, and it looks so different with the front of the building gone. Like, yeah, oh, no. it was just really weird seeing that. You don't realize how large the building is until you really compare it to the old Madison Avenue. Well, if you look at the two facilities, you really realize how large it is when you go by Concord. Yeah, because it's up on it's the right, hill. It's so right next to the road that it looks enormous, yeah, even though right this exactly the same schools. I think the color combination is nice too. Hey, he complimented <laughs> you. <laughs> In which building? Both. Both. Oh. On the outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's a property we purchased early on. To expand the back part of the property so we can put fields back there. We still have a uh, plan a football field, a soccer field, and a uh, baseball field, which will overlap a little bit with the football field. Boy, that's come along nice. It is, yeah. How much of this property do we own, though? We only own up to the where the. It's a tree line back there. Yeah, it's not up to where the construction is. It's past no, that, yeah, it's past right? It's okay. Past. Yeah. This is where all the fields will be going. In. Yes. Right, but it's past that grass line, correct? We own oh, it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I thought so, but I wasn't sure. Right there. Right. Oh, okay. Right here. <coughs> Got it. So the this septic field, refresh my memory, is this? It's off to the side. Of yeah, I see where it's at, but I'm just saying, is it part of? This, this isn't it. This is like a pump station. It's over here. This oh. And this has really good sand, so we don't have the mounds there. Did we end up using some of the old? Or put a whole brand new system? It's a whole new system. Yeah. It's nice because it sets far back from the road. It does. That's again one thing I, I keep on mentioning at all our meetings is the fact that the parking lot will not be done nor nor will a, a, a formal drop off. Jim, what's going to be done? <coughs> it's going to be two loops. One is going to be for buses and the other one's going to be for parents and drop off. Two long uh, loops. How much more? I thought this one was the shortest. It's almost done. Okay. Other than that, we, we're keeping an eye on our numbers right now. We're looking at um, interdistrict uh, requests and also what we have in terms of open enrolled students that are already in our system uh, as opposed to ones that are new. And uh, we're closer to the time when we start school, we'll have a better idea of what those numbers will look like. Um, we do have a couple classes that are a little high right now, which might require us to hire another a teacher, but we're waiting uh, until we get a few, some more information before we approach the board to do that. That concludes my report. No, I'm it's, 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 I thought you said something. No, I, I almost did, but it's, it's just the, the numbers this year are 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 unique. I mean, they're just they're different. You know, what I mean, like. We have different buildings, different constituents, and we've got we've got applications that are out there that aren't completed yet. We've got so it's it's the projections are a little more different. So we're actually going to look at the open enrollment, but I'm going to actually tomorrow. I got to look at what our raw enrollment is. So I'm going to actually take everyone out, make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be, intra and inter, and see what our actual numbers are. Um, before we start really accepting those. I mean, our goal is to have that done by the end of the week. Um, but 
we'll keep you updated. It's just I mean, some of the requests in terms of intra have kind of helped our numbers right. as well. Right. So that's a good, thing, a good problem to have. Classes, yeah. How are the kindergarten numbers? Uh, I think we're at like 215 right now. So but a little higher than normal, right? 215. Um, but again, I've got like 7, 14, like almost 30 more applications out there that are kind of impending. So, and then we've got 76 applications that we can't even really follow up on until um, they actually do enough of the applications. So, but those could be high school kids. They could, you know, so it's just, uh, we're trying. I mean, I've been monitoring these all summer, with the exception of one of these. So, we'll keep you guys updated. Thanks. One one other thing I wanted to mention as well. Um, oh, Mr. Wainer is here. I had some guests from another uh, neighboring school district. And we'll leave it nameless, but uh, there were a few other administrators were taking a class and on facilities, and um, I think it was classes for the superintendent certificate or license. And um, we went through the new building. They were very impressed. But what impressed me more than anything else is when I took them through the high school. They mentioned for you know, being such an old building, how clean it looked. Mm. And they kept on going on about saying that the building never looks like this. That's very nice. It's yeah. pride in workmanship starts with you, Mr. Winter, and it, it, it flows through your whole department. Thank you. And I got a great staff and great summer workers to make all this happen. And I just stay out of everybody's way. What are the summer workers done? What are they done? When are they done? Uh, they, they're kind of filtering out now. The 31st, since it was the end of the pay period, a lot of the, they're taken off. We had their going away hamburg hot dog cook off uh, the other day. And um, that's when those guys came through. Yeah. The ones, uh, the kids were playing cornhole out in the back. I gave them the afternoon off, told them to. Oh, nice. Well, you know, they all brought something, and all the custodians brought food. The right, the right thing to do. Yeah, and I bought uh, burgers and hot dogs. It was a fun afternoon. They had a blast. I drove by and I saw water buckets and I said, <laughs> <laughs> But it was a great summer crew. So they're filtering off. And they're kind of, yeah, by the end of this. And then I've got a couple of um, seniors from last year that said that they didn't really know what they wanted to do and they weren't um, going to college. And I. I said, hey, I've got uh, new schools opening and I need hands on deck. And I said, you guys can stay as long as you want. So I have a few that are going to be staying because they just don't have any plans right after Excellent. college. So I'm hustling them and keeping them here as long as I can. And I see we're actually Great. hiring a recent graduate as well. Noah? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. He was in the band. He's worked for me three years. He played eighth grade football for me, broke his arm in seventh grade, and I didn't realize it. We put him down in a hitting drill. I looked down on the ground, and his heart wasn't into that first hitting drill in eighth grade. And I looked down, and what's the matter with you? You got to hit somebody here, man. And uh, he turned out working with me and Scott as our team manager. Said he didn't want to be called a water boy, so we had him setting up drills, and he is going to now going to be the. Uh, custodian at uh, Buckeye. Yeah, you're hiring for a full-time position. Yeah, awesome. he uh, said he likes it here, felt comfortable here, and yeah. I said, keep going, boy. Right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Cool. A lot of people don't want to be here. Right. It's a good thing. Well, Mr. Kalos told me today that we also have another gentleman, Mr. Frito. I guess they graduated from here, and I, I wasn't aware of that. I actually had him as a student when I was a principal at the move. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had it too. As a uh, I think it's just really cool though, because we we have like he's actually just a like a, just graduate. Yeah, he, he's he's worked three for summers that. for me, and um, he came and said, "Mr. Wainer, I want to apply for one of these jobs." And I said, "You know what? He's been great for us, and I, he'll grow into the job. There's going to be some growing pains for him, but uh, I, I got a lot of confidence in him." Yeah. Excellent. That concludes my report. Okay, very good. Mr. Potter. Okay. I have the most important uh, business item tonight. I'm going to pass out here. It's the template for the dedication flag for the new buildings. Um, oh. I need to finalize a 
everyone's name and the wording that goes on and everything. So I'm going to pass this around. Uh, just need you guys to confirm I have your names right, you know, middle initial, you know, for, for Jack, you know, you know, for Jack or John on the plaque, for Steve with Steven, Steve, you know, just kind of little tweaks like that. So I just kind of needed that. Oh. <laughs> you going to pass the rest of it on? <laughs> this is super exciting. <laughs> Do we have to have our initials? You don't have to. I can, we can put anything, you know, we can take your middle initial out. feedback on that because they're hoping to get that <coughs> finalized as soon as possible. <laughs> so how does this, the plaque though just shows like four board members, where's the fifth? Yeah, that's why like, they give you the template and a PDF so you can't change it. Oh, okay. I'm assuming, I mean every district usually has five board Well, right. That's board. what I was just asking though. So I'm sure they're going to tweak that. And plus, this is an old template, just as John Casey has left. Right, right. right. No, I know, isn't it cool? Anybody want to tweak their name on the plaque, or is everything good the way it is? I'm good with that. You guys good? Good. Steve, good. Jack, you good with the way it is? Okay. Now I will get that like, off yeah. to the so icon. I like icon. both names, but it doesn't look like it's fine. Okay. I can, I can adjust it in any way you want me to. So. I'll let you know. I'll think about it later. I will let you know before we leave. Okay. Um, next thing I want to do is uh, on tonight's agenda, we have the uh, Hale Road lease um, to, to vote on. I just want to go a quick summary over it one last time uh, before we get to that vote. Um, the Hale Road lease is to the Lake County, Jug County ESC. It's just for this next upcoming school year through J July 31st, 2020, with an annual rate rent of 70000 be paid monthly at $5,833. Uh, that covers the cost of utilities, insurance, uh, some ground maintenance, and if the utilities over that lease period exceeds 52625 they will pay us the difference. So if they're racking up electric bills beyond what we normally do, then they'll be on the hook for that. Uh, if we enter into a purchase agreement for Hale Road before December 31st of this year, 50% uh, of the rent will go towards a purchase price, whatever that purchase price may be. Um, they have the option of us providing a custodian for two hours a day. Uh, we have at a cost of $1,300 a month, so Dan Weiner has a floating custodian that we can, they can utilize if they want, or they can go, they have a firm they use right now, their current building, that they, they might go that route too, I'm not sure which route they're selecting at this point. And then also, uh, Mr. Wainer's bidding out the plowing contract for this coming year, but obviously all the schools are changing, and he's going to get an itemized price for Hill Road. And if um, ESC wants to piggyback off our contract, we'll build them the actual cost of the plow Hill Road for the winter time. Uh, there's a few other things as far as if the if the, the property comes out of taxable because it's leased, if it loses ex exempt status, they'll be on the hook for the, the pay of property taxes. And then uh, we can continue to store items in the unused portion of the building because they're not using every single room at this time. And that they're going to be responsible mm -hmm. for any repairs. And if, but if there's any type of significant repair that's needed, we can terminate the lease by either party. But they're responsible if they, you know, if that damage is caused by them, they'll be responsible for paying to fix that. So if they disturb asbestos or some, something else major happens at their fault, they'll be on the, on the hook for that. And also align them the sublease to other entities as long as they get our permission in writing. So that's kind of the, the major bullet points of that lease agreement. It's a great partnership. It moves uh, some of the programming that they have right now in Will of Eastlake schools out in Eastlake. They moved it closer to Lake County districts that are currently using the lake and the other county ESCs. Because as we, we spoke before, like Minner and Will of Eastlake, they use Cuyahoga ESC. So moving. Hill Road, number one's a much better facility than what they have now at, at the old Washington School in East Lake, and it's also closer and benefits all of the districts that are still members of Lake County ESC and Beyond County ESC, save on transportation costs. And then ultimately, just to make sure people, you know, who might be viewing, we're, we're ultimately looking to hopefully have, negotiate and sell the building to the ESC, so that's hence the need for the, the right. intermediate lease. Right, and the lease was because they wanted to get in now to, to be ready for programming for this year. 
just didn't have enough time to finalize a purchase agreement, getting appraisals done, and property <coughs> surveys, and title searches, and all that stuff that goes into the you know, potential purchase. So that will be another thing later down the road to, to, to negotiate the purchase price, and, and hopefully we can come to terms and it will be a, a good situation for all entities. Uh, another thing I've been working on is I received all the balances from all of our PTA groups. Obviously, everything is changing with different buildings, and we're working on the reallocation of those funds. I'm doing those calculations pretty much done at this point. Um, I'm supposed to communicate them out by tomorrow, so I should have them out the next day or two. Uh, and then in August, the groups will transfer the funds amongst themselves, so we'll be down to four PTA groups for the, the elementary schools. And looking at this preliminary calculations, and every, every group has a, a fairly nice balance balance of their budget compared to the number of students in the school is mm -hmm. obviously Parkside and Riverview what larger balance but they have more students as opposed to Buckeye and Melrose but nobody's seems to be short change there's no group that stands out that shows that you know they don't have funds to they all have good bad. balances to continue supporting those schools and, and the students that are in those buildings and the reallocation was basically based on uh, estimates of how many students moved from one building to another and it, it seemed to work out Really well. And they were all in agreement with that too. Right. We had met right. a few times with the RPTA groups. Um, yeah. You know, kind of discussed it, and there was some a lot of questions answered, and, and I think everyone kind of agreed that it was kind of the best approach, and it, it seems to work out pretty well. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with because the district has also its own activity funds um, for each building, so we're going to allocate them a similar way. But I haven't done any calculations on that to see how that works out. Um, I did not do a construction budget update this month. There's not much has changed. Um, there's a few change orders. It's all going against the ICON's contingency. I wanted to point out that right now there's $217,000 left in the construction manager's contingency. This pays for, they work overtime on well, now Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We pay the half time because we're already paying for the straight time, but they work on you know, over 40 hours, we pay the half time. That's that's some of the costs of going contingencies and some other minor changes and things like that. Uh, so there's still 217,000 left. Uh, this next month's gonna be a little expensive, but I imagine we'll have more than 100,000 left in that contingency that will be unused at this point. At the end of the project, that will just you know help offset some of the, the uh, overruns. And the next thing I have is the slideshow. Um, I wanted to give a couple updates. OSBA Capital Conference is coming up in November on the 10th, Sunday the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, we're going to need to appoint, uh, first of all, I need to know who's attending the conference this year. If anybody knows they are or not, let me know now, and then I can follow up with who is still unsure at this point. I don't think I'm going this year. Yeah. I plan on going. I don't think I was going to go this year. And then so I'm going to be the delegate now. So, yeah, because we have the next meeting at the point of delegate and alternate, but if we only have one member going, then we'll just have <laughs> one delegate, and, and we'll get to move forward with that. Um, and we'll board approve that uh, next month. Right. Hmm? It means I'm going to get up for um, Next thing I want to go over is the That's state budget. 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 Uh, yeah. This has been finalized finally on uh, July 17th, so they missed their June 30th deadline. Uh, they had an extension, got finalized July 17th. The governor signed it on the 18th. I think it was the state operated about a budget for about eight hours or so. Um, so the, for school funding, the key uh, right now, the, basically no longer a funding formula. Everyone is basically locked at what they got uh, this past fiscal year for the next two years. But there's also new student wellness funds, um, which will be based on the number of students being educated by the district, not by the current funding formula where it's based on how many kids live in your district and a bunch of adjustments. Um, and there's also a supplemental student wellness fun, uh, funds that go to districts that have at least 10% of the real property being agriculture. That doesn't apply to us. We're one or 2% at, at most. I think it's actually less than one possibly. they kind of my garden. And then if there's, if you, there's also growing district aid for those districts that are experience enrollment growth, which aren't very many. Usually it's in the Columbus area. Uh, there's some funds that available through that, but that also does not qualify for us as well. 
Um, so basically, this is kind of this gets pulled from our. It's called the SFPR. It's basically a, a breakdown of our state funding. So that 8.3 million dollar number at the bottom there. It's it's kind of what we're being locked at for the next two years. Um, kind of the only thing I want to point out. So like, there's different categories of funding. It's all locked. So if you know special ed funding, if we have additional students, we don't get additional funding. If we have less students, we don't lose funding. Uh, like th third grade guarantee, we don't get additional funds for that. We meet those criteria. You know, just kind of <coughs> different things like that. It's just kind of locked where it is for the next two years. So for the student wellness aid, uh, there's a list of 11 items that those funds can be spent on, mental health services, uh, services for homeless youth, services for child welfare, community liaisons, uh, physical health care services, mentoring programs, family engagement, City Connects programming, professional development for trauma-informed care and for cultural competence, and also student services provided uh, prior to or after the regularly scheduled day. There's no uh, non-supplant rule, so what that means is if we're providing these services already, we don't have to find new services to spend money on. These funds can go towards those services, freeing up those other general fund dollars to be used for other purposes or for future use. So based on the projections for fiscal year 2020, we'll receive 184,000, and for 2021, about 258,000. I don't know if you had a chance to, to look, but looking at our, our current uh, spending in, in these areas, how, approximately how much of, of this is, how much is the offset going to be, I guess? Right. I, I, you know, we're still waiting for more guidance on it. For like, you know, there's situations like for like psychologist, does that qualify? We think it does, but if you're counting that towards special ed, because you have to spend so much for special ed grants in your general fund, are you allowed to double count those towards this and towards that type of thing? Kind of, you know, so we're kind of getting that guide, but things like, you know, the crossroad services would be a perfect example. I think that was, um, what was it? what's our contract for this year? It's, it's 120 or 140,000 for crossroads. Um, also the, the family connector with the, uh, with the striving leaders grant that we're going to fund with the grant this year, but the following year when our increase goes from 184 to 258, we can fund that position using these funds. Would be one of the allowable uses. And so you know, it's it's kind of hard to. We're still waiting on more guidance to make sure that we're following what we should, and make sure we're not double counting things that we should double count. And make sure that. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about interest income uh, now that we closed out the fiscal year. I wanted to show uh, utilizing Star Ohio and our our different operating funds. So general funds, we received two hundred seventy four thousand dollars in interest this past fiscal year. Uh, Thirty thousand went to the bond retirement fund, a little bit to lunch fund, about just under four thousand latch key, about nineteen hundred to the joint financing district fund, and thirty thousand to the permanent improvement fund, totaling three hundred forty one thousand dollars or so in interest for operating funds. And then we earned six hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars in our construction funds, you know, helping to offset those overages for a total of nine hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars this year in interest income. On the right hand side is historical, the top section, excluding the construction funds, that's not typical. Uh, we had 146,000 last year compared to 341,000 this year. And you can see, like even back in 2015 when interest rates were close to zero, <laughs> we got eight hundred and eighty dollars that year. So interest rates are really helped us um, earn some funds. And at the bottom, this construction funds, we had we had gotten 452000 last year and 67000 the year before. So we're over a million dollars in interest on the construction fund since we started. But that's quickly dwindling because we're the bringing schools online. online. We're so that's since the company's been good. Yeah. And then so about 2 to $3 million a month right now gets paid out for the construction project, the other project funds. So, this, you know, in interest this year is going to be minimal, like right. hundred thousand or less at this point. We're using we're using that that um, advisor out of Cincinnati yeah. for our construction funds. Are they doing our other funds as well? Uh, he's just doing construction funds right now, but we're considering so doing uh, more because now that the feds are talking about cutting rates, so we may want to lock into something a little more long term because Star Ohio is going to 
once it kind of follows the Fed rates and has the rates go down, so Ohio's going to go down and interest rates go down. You know, right. So right. Might lock things in for well, a couple of years. Right. So you have more funds available anyway. Um, right. You, you got to balance you know, cash flow, make sure that right. you don't lock up something and you need it six months later. Uh, next slide here is looking at revenue. We wanted to just compare the May five year forecast to where we finished the year at. Uh, the two larger differences, uh, restricted grants and aid, we got our catastrophic cost reimbursement. Uh, basically, that's when uh, certain special ed costs exceed a certain threshold. And uh, just based on history, um, you know, it's projecting higher than we received. And that's basically contingent on what the other 609 school districts in Ohio submit as their cost. And um, they kind of allocate it out across all those districts of what funding is available. Uh, so that came in a little bit lower than usual. So that's that variance there. In other revenues, there's basically an interest income exceeded May projection. And then we also received the, the Medicaid 2017 cost report. If you remember doing the forecast presentation, they were getting ready to pay it. And we weren't sure if it was going to be before June 30th or after. So it came before. So it fell into this fiscal year instead of next fiscal year. So our revenue basically ended up almost 380,000 higher than projected, about 0.79% variance from May. And on the expenditure side, uh, nothing too unusual here. Capital outlay is just a larger variance because it's a small number. Uh, most of our capital outlay, com capital outlay comes out of the PI fund. This capital outlay is basically when a principal uses their budget to buy something more of a capital matter using their funds. So that's basically where that number comes from. And then uh, at the bottom, advances out. Uh, we no longer need, we usually would advance funds to our grant funds to, fund, to cover negatives. You don't have to do that anymore as long as you have an outstanding cash request with ODE. So that always ended up being a wash because you always advanced it out in June and returned it in July and August. Um, so that's that kind of explains that variance. So you can carry a negative fund balance. You can carry a negative fund balance yeah. as long as you have the cash request in. Um, so our cash balance at the end of the, this year was 12.7 million, and uh, encumbrances it, it, you know, it was fairly close. And then lastly, I want to go through uh, just the monthly financial report real quick. I'm just going to skip a few things here. Thank you. Because I wanted to go through. Also, get over there. These monthly reports get posted on uh, the treasurer page on our website. Uh, looking at fund balances, I know it's a little small, but you see, as we said, we can carry a negative fund balance in the federal grant. So it's always on a reimbursement basis. So you incur the expense one month, you get reimbursed the following. And so this is allowable to have <coughs> that negative balance because you're always running negative. But you can kind of see construction fund where we were at 15.7 million at the end of the year. That will quickly dwindle down here over the next six months. And our permanent improvement fund had 1.8, almost 1.9 million uh, in its balance. About 1.4 million was encumbered. About 1.2 million of that is related to the building project for the furniture and uh, music equipment. Uh, our hope is to move some of those encumbrances back onto the building fund as we get those contingency dollars back and as we earn a little more interest and kind of dwindle down. So we don't expect any any other major change orders at this point on the construction fund. What do we do with our public school support fund? What is that designated uh, for? Which one? The public school support <coughs> fund. Uh, are we team? Oh, wait, that's like your uh, activity fund for the buildings. Um, like they do the pizza parties and all that stuff out of, out of those funds. And sometimes you get uh, local grants and things like that, that donations that can go up there as well. Um, I think that's all I'm going to go over on this, just because we are kind of already going over general fund, but there's just more detail uh, of the different revenue streams and expenditures. So I think I'm just going to kind of skip through that since we saw the overall uh, summary. I think that concludes my report, unless anybody has any questions. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that takes us to public participation. Anyone wishing to address the Board of Education will be recognized by the Board President. 
Speakers are requested to identify themselves and their topic. Comments are limited to three minutes. Okay. Yes, I have one. Oh, yes. Hi. Dr. Kalis, uh, uh, the new school in Concord, uh, you talked about a footpath to service one community. Is that typical for uh, the school district to get into the situation of uh, providing a footpath for a narrow spectrum of students that go to that school? It is when uh, the location would prohibit the kids from walking on a busy street like 608. We want to make sure that they have a way to get there. It's my understanding through the HOA, when they were uh, putting some of it in, um, that uh, there was to be uh, pathways throughout. It's my understanding that they believe that this may be the catalyst for those trails. You know, I see this as maybe more of a HOA function rather than a school board function to uh, uh, Acquire this footpath and maintain this footpath. Well, it isn't. Uh, it isn't our property, so you are right about that. We don't have control over it. It's my understanding that the uh, trustees originally um, offered to have that path in there until some of the residents um, that backed up to that property wanted to have more discussion. And at which point, and I think I understand it correctly, it was the trustees that um, allowed the um, HOA to decide whether or not that that path will go in. The way it stands right now in terms of our responsibility, it's not our land, but part of the deal would be for us to maintain that property. Yeah, the, the path would not be, we're, we're not we're not incurring costs of the path installation. The town, my understanding is the township was paying for that. Uh, they just asked for us to agree to maintain it, basically shovel the snow, and if any weed overgrowth, things like that, just kind of go through and, and clean that up from time to time. Uh, Okay, the Concord trustees would be installing that path, and you'd be maintaining that path. Yes. Uh, what does the HOA have? What's the skin in their game? For? They're providing that uh, pathway for residents to enjoy that uh, property. Okay. Uh, not only for the kids to walk to school in a safe manner, um, but also well, there's going to be some walking paths around the uh, property. Um, there'll be playgrounds. Kids can utilize some of that uh, during off hours, off days, summers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, if we don't have anything else, it takes us to the consent agenda. A consent agenda provides for more efficient use of time. Any board member can remove a consent agenda item to be discussed and voted on individually. First up is finance and audit. Yes, we have a motion to approve the items listed on the finance and audit consent agenda. It's recommended by the treasurer, item A through D. A second. Thank you. Um, I just have one question on the school resource officer for 1920. We're getting a new resource officer, correct? That is we, correct. Has anyone identified yet? They they have, but it's not official yet. Okay. Now they still need to do some more work in, on their end, but it'll be a we'll have one in place before the start of the school year. Does this also does this also include the move? No, the, 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 the SRO is, is stationed here, but they're an SRO for the entire district. What we, we have at LaMouth is, we LaMouth is a little bit different. They're not necessarily SROs, although one of the fellows that's working the door at LaMouth is in SRO school now as we speak. So uh, we're getting quite a bargain there because we're not spending the same salary there as we are here for an SRO. Okay. okay. The only and, and, and one of the, the fellows that works the door, Mr. Diamond, is not going to be there next year, so there'll be another person in that role. Another deputy. When they assign, do we have to approve that, or is that just they just assign? Uh, they, I mean, it's it's a mutual agreement. Um, they won't put anyone in our school that we don't want oh. to, but there's not anyone really on their staff that we wouldn't want oh, in our right. buildings right. anyway. That's all. All right. If there's no other um, items on those agenda items, can we call the roll, please? Steve Jeffries. Aye. Jennifer Harden. Aye. Jack Miley. Aye. Linda Grassy. Aye. Tom Hay. Aye. Motion carried. Personnel. <coughs> We've got some of these separate. Yeah, so, uh, we have a motion to approve the items listed on the personnel consent agenda as recommended by the superintendent items A through G. A through G. A through G. I'll second. Thank you. Do we have any discussion on those items? All right, well, if not, can we call the roll, please? Jennifer Harden? Aye. Jack Miley? Aye. Linda Grassi? Aye. Tom Hack? Aye. Steve Jeffries? Aye. 
Motion carried. And we have a resolution to approve a new employment agreement with Gary Platko for treasurer, chief of, uh, financial officer for the Riverside Local School District, effective August 1st, 2019 through July 31st, 2022. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Discussion on this? Um, Mr. Placco recently signed a, a five-year contract. Um, he was in the first year of this contract before we decided to renew it. Um, Mr. Placco, we, we've already had discussions regarding this, and um, you're doing an excellent job, but I just cannot condone um, 21 per, uh, 18 to 21 percent increase in, in the salary for anyone. Um, I, I'm sorry, I just can't do that. You're doing an excellent job. I appreciate the job that you're doing, but at some point, 21% is just a little bit too too much for me. Um, and on the flip side, I'm just going to um, say that we that that conversation was had um, in an effort to make our treasurer whole with other districts um, and bring the, him up to the compensation level that is appropriate for that position within other area districts throughout Ashtabula, Lake, Geauga, and Cuyahoga County. And, and so um, that's just the other counterpoint to that. So that's that's correct, but I just want to ask anyone out there, have you ever received a 21% increase in your salary? I, I think we need... It's really not right, appropriate. Personnel issues need to be discussed at all. probably in the next session. Which we already did, so yes. Um, if we have no other discussion, can we call it Mr. Petko? Okay. Jack Miley? Aye. Glenn DeGrassi? Aye. Tom Hack? Aye. Steve Jeffries? Nay. Jennifer Harden? Aye. Motion carried. We're very happy to have you. Right. Thank you. Gary, Four so years. am I. Thank you. Um, next up, we have uh, two resolutions for athletics. We have a resolution um, to accept the following athletic Resi personnel. It's, it's resignations. Uh, resignation. Okay, so. Three coaches. Uh, yeah, three, co three coaches. I'm sorry, these are not lettered, and so. Uh, yeah, I apologize. Yeah, that's it's okay. Not clear. Um, for three resignations for a head coach, boys soccer, varsity assistant, boys soccer, and assistant boys soccer. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. There's no discussion on that. Can we call the roll on those? Blim Grassi? Aye. Tom Hack? Aye. Steve Jeffries? Aye. Jennifer Hart? Epstein? Jack Miley? Aye. And the last motion thing is we have is a motion to approve supplemental contract and volunteer recommendations per the attachment that was included with our um, board packet. Can I have a second on that? Second. And that was also athletic related. Yes. Um, so if I can have you call the roll on that as well. Yeah. Is it, right? Tom Hack? Aye. Steve Jeffries? Aye. Uh, Jennifer Hart? Staying. Jack Miley? Aye. Will Negress? Aye. Motion carried. And that is all for personnel. Shoo! <laughs> <laughs> Curriculum programming. Curriculum. Motion to approve the items listed on the curriculum and programming <coughs> consent agenda as recommended by the superintendent A through C. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Any questions? Mm. Mm. I remember seeing them, but I guess we're okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Okay, roll call, please. Steve Jeffries? Aye. Jennifer Harden? Aye. Jack Miley? Aye. Glenn DeGrassi? Aye. Tom Hatt? Aye. Motion carried. Buildings and grounds? Motion to approve the items listed on the buildings and grounds consent agenda items A through D. It's recommended by the superintendent. It may I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Grassi. Any discussion? Nope, just excited about that here. Already. Me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. All right. Can you call the roll, please? Jennifer Harden? Aye. Jack Miley? Aye. Glenn Grassi? Aye. Tom Hack? Aye. Steve Jeff? Aye. Motion carried. All right. It brings us to the Board of Education update. If anyone has got anything on that? Um, I would just like to wish all the recent graduates of our district who are leaving and going to college good luck and carry on. Remember us. Yes. And Nick, you've got Community Kindness Day coming up, right? August 15th. Yeah. Yes. You have a decent group today again? Uh, we have about over 40 teachers signed up awesome. so far, um, which is you know, 
normally get about between 40 and 50. And basically what it is is teachers volunteer, uh, teachers and administrators uh, volunteer uh, about four or five hours that day and go out to different um, places within the district, whether it's businesses, organizations, parks, parking lots, restaurants, and uh, kind of give back some uh, t-shirts, gift certificates, uh, different random acts of kindness. Um, so it's really a uh, fun day for everybody. Uh, I just want to remind people of the uh, tailgate party on, our, on September 6th. I know that we have another board meeting before that, but put it on your calendar. And um, don't we start the athletic like practices August 1st? August 1st, Thursday. I know, it's this week. And August 28th, right, is meet the team night, the day after our next board meeting. Which day? What day? August 28th. 28th. Let's meet the oh, teams. I was going to say, oh my God, I'm looking at September. What? August 28th, meet the teams oh. at 7 o'clock in the stadium. I would like to request that uh, we go and do executive sessions for matters of personnel and appointment, and I swear it won't be more than five minutes. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to hold you to I'll that. I'll put the timer on. All right. Yeah. All right, then I'll make a motion to adjourn to executive session at 8.44 p.m. for matters of personnel. Appointment. I, an appointment, if I can please have a second. 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 Thank you. Either one. Call the roll, please. Jack Miley? Aye. Lynn Grassi? Aye. Tom Heck? Aye. CJ? Aye. Jennifer Hart? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you all very much.